The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hi, so Keith Galbert, agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada, here today with Kara Oosterhouse to talk about plant stand counts. If you've been fortunate enough to receive one of these in the mail or requested them, they're just a fabric version of the same yellow hula hoops we've had for years. And it's really hard to count plants. This is a quarter meter squared. Sometimes this particular one's two square feet. Just throw it in a random fashion and go take a look how many plants you've got. You can see on here, we've actually printed that we're looking for five to eight plants per square feet. If you caught it, I said that we were two plants per square feet uh, in this hoop. So any number we've got in this hoop, we're gonna divide by two. One of the concerns in this field is that we've got a lot of volunteers. So uh, Liberty Link field at this point. Uh, so any Roundup Ready volunteers from a couple years back will be dying. So you may wanna check a lot of these late germinating things uh, could easily be a volunteer and we don't necessarily want to count them. Some of the earlier emerged volunteers are already uh, dying here as, as uh, shown, shown with this dead one. It's as simple as counting the plants. I'm, I'm going to count all the volunteers just to keep it easy on myself. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, I'm not going to count that one, its stem isn't really in the hoop. Uh, 22 divided by 2 is 11. 11 uh, per square foot is actually on the high end. We used to recommend 7 to 14. We fine-tuned those recommendations to 5 to 8. One of the companies out there actually recommends 5 to 7. I don't think there's a lot of difference there, but the key is to have a uniform, evenly emerged crop that does the job of capturing sunlight and producing yield for you. So if you're not in that 5 to 8 time frame, or, or, or plant stand, you need to figure out why. So it could be simply that you, you seed it at a relatively low seeding rate, but then on top of that had a, had a low emergence. We use 50% as the average emergence for canola, so you're putting two seeds in the ground for every one plant that you actually get to this two to three leaf stage when it's a, a good time to count. And part of this is assessing your ability to get a plant stand established. It's a way to evaluate your seeder. You're going to be walking around the field to do this in a number of spots. You're going to be taking a look for streaking or stripping or something to indicate that uh, one wing on your seeder is too far down or every third row has got poor emergence. It's a good time uh, here the first week of June to, to diagnose any issues that are in your field. Um, if you do one, it's simply a shot in the dark. If you do two, well, you have some kind of an average, but at least three will get you a bit of an idea. Do, a, do them a decent distance apart. If you actually need to make a decision like reseeding or if you really think you're diagnosing a problem, you might do 20 or 30 of these across the field to get an idea what percentage of the field has an issue and how bad it is. So uh, we'll see if I can hit a, a really low spot and we'll have that conversation at our next circle. So I'm not concerned about this field in general. It's starting to establish itself. We can start to see rows now. Canola really doesn't seem like that vigorous of a crop in its first few weeks of life. So we do try to baby it a bit and, and get it established. Count in this particular two square foot hoop is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Again, I mentioned that there are some volunteers in this field. So you're gonna to wanna to dig these up. Uh, this is a good time to do some scouting. You notice here, I've got significant flea beetle uh, feeding on the stem and that kink is very likely to break. So, you know, I probably wouldn't count that if I were, if I were uh, trying to assess this stand. But when I dug that plant, one of the things I was trying to look for was to see if I could find a blue seed coat or uh, less likely if I could find an untreated seed coat that would really tell me that it's a volunteer. If I go in the row here and dig up these plants, I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna find a nice blue seed that'll indicate that, that this is the crop that's gonna survive my herbicide application and it's the hybrid that I paid for and that I want to, want to establish. You can see the blue seed coat way down there at the bottom. It would, but a uh, great job of seeding uh, when, I, when I checked it. But it's since filled in, we've had a bit of rain and uh, these furrows are quite a bit deeper. If you're digging for these plants and you're really not finding those blue seed coats, you're at risk of counting these plants, thinking that you're established them, and then coming in with a second pass and realizing you killed half the plants that, that are present in the field. So I'm gonna pull most of these just to make Kara nervous. Now I'm down to one, two, three, four. 
we'll get rid of this one too. Now I'm down to four plants per square foot. Um, there's a bit of a, a threshold at two, or sorry, four plants per, per hoop. That's two plants per square foot. If you look carefully, we've got another two. So all of a sudden we're a little more optimistic. Now we're six plants in the hoop, three plants per square foot. At two plants per square foot, evenly spaced across the field, we feel fairly confident that you have a really good chance of achieving close to your optimal yield or your, your maximum yield. Uh, might, might go as high as saying there's a 90% chance you'll get, you'll, get, uh, uh, you'll get a good yield in this field that you might have expected from a stand of four or five or six plants per square foot but it will take more time. It'll take more branches, might take a little more moisture. Uh, it'll definitely, definitely be a little more stagey of a crop and a little harder to, harder to manage. But you're now three weeks past seeding, maybe four weeks past seeding, and you're trying to decide if I should start over. Uh, so if you're faced with these low of plant counts, you're gonna have to throw this hoop 10, 20, 30, 40 times all the way across the field, through the low spots, through the high tops, high spots, put it down on a piece of paper and take a look at it because you're gonna to wanna to look at that paper at the end and say, okay, my average plant stand in this field is three plants per square foot, but a third of this field is at zero or one. And that means all the hilltops are so thin that they'll just be weeds. Now you're gonna decide that, well, Yes, maybe that means it's worth reseeding canola, but do you have the moisture to restart another crop? Do you want another crop? Is there a market for feed in your area if, if you chose to seed a late crop of green feed? So, so all of those things will, will come into play. And then last but not least, are you going to have to drive past this field every day and have your neighbors talk to you about it? Because that might tip the, the balance towards reseeding uh, a little quicker than, uh, than it might otherwise. But most importantly is to not get caught with this kind of decision uh, late. Catch it early if you can. Go out and scout your field regularly. Uh, these kind of problems start to be caught while you're still finishing seeding up the rest of your other crops. So, so go out, take a look, make sure you're looking for flea beetles or anything else that might be bothering your canola crop or, or changing your ability to get it off to a good start.